For hundreds of years, the White Mountains have exerted a strong pull on travelers, drawing them up winding river valleys and through rugged notches to revel in the high peaks that lay beyond, to find something new and renewing in the rarefied mountain air. The reasons for coming changed over time, and so did the methods of getting here. As a result, the experience of passing through these mountains changed too. Today, the White Mountains are easy to reach, the Northeast's wild backyard. But it wasn't always this way. 200 years ago, the remote high country was cloaked in mystery, unmapped and sparsely settled. 1800, a few adventurous travelers picked their way through rugged passes, Franconia Notch in the west and Crawford Notch to the east. On foot or horseback, the going was tough and slow. We had before us that wild mountain pass called the Notch. As this road is impassable, excepting to foot travelers, we had to strap our luggage on our backs. We crossed the Sacco River several times by means of fallen trees and rocks, and I may add, firm nerves. Nature's brute forces offered up awesome, even frightening discoveries. This tremendous abyss made us dizzy. By some terrible convulsion was it cleft down to the mountain's heart as by a sword. Eighteen thirty two. The trip north from Boston took four days by carriage over poor roads. Eighteen miles from Concord, our party, on an excursion of pleasure among the White Mountains, were placed in a smaller carriage, moving by the power of two worn-out steeds, ill-favored and lean-fleshed. Our progress was slow, just four miles an hour. This long excursion was made by scientists, businessmen, and those tourists wealthy enough to afford the many weeks of time required. The leisurely pace inspired reflection. Visitors saw in the mountains evidence of a divine hand and symbols of a great nation. A valley lay before us, built by the hand of omnipotence, of astonishing altitude and of frightful steepness. Such amazing grandeur, such terrific majesty in the Almighty's works I had never before witnessed. Mount Washington looked near to heaven. He was white with snow a mile downward. Mountains are Earth's undecaying monuments and never should be consecrated to the mere great men of their own age and country, but to the mighty ones alone, whose glory is universal. As the mountains gained renown, gateways like the Conway Valley attracted growing numbers of summer tourists. Many were artists to whom the local innkeepers happily catered. Father saw the value of such men to spread the beauties of the place about. And at one time we had 15 or more of the most prominent artists of the country with us. We used to convey them to different points for their work and often carry them their dinners without extra charge. Prints of their artwork were wildly popular back home and promoted the mountains to the masses. As life grew ever more urban and industrial, Americans began to seek respite from the workaday world and found it in the White Mountains. Eighteen fifty one, the first railroad reached the high peaks at the remote village of Gorham. Travel time dropped, 
and mountain sojourns became affordable to the middle class. The rapid extension of the railroads into the mountain district has substituted for the formerly arduous task of traveling a luxurious and rapid transit. The traveler now traverses the savage defiles and ascends the rugged valleys while reclining among the cushions of a palace car. As hotels sprang up at railheads, roughing it was no longer required. Discerning guests enjoyed fine amenities and a full schedule of leisure activities. The hotel is a convenient impertinence up there among the everlasting hills, and I am disgusted with it. While I enjoy its comforts, romance and rain don't agree as well as one could desire. On Mount Washington in the 1860s, astounding new attractions like the carriage road and the cog railway tamed the extreme terrain and brought big business to the peaks. This carriage road is a wonder. It's as smooth and level as any country road. It pays the stockholders almost 6% per annum. By 1870, travelers could board a train in Manhattan in the morning and speed by rail the entire way to the very top of Mount Washington, all before nightfall. By the 1890s, the mountains had been transformed from remote wilderness to an accessible vacation destination. But through time and all the changes, one thing has remained constant, the enduring allure of the White Mountains. Spent a month at the White Mountains and it did me much good. Mountains are restful and uplifting to my mind. Lived in the woods and reveled in brooks, birds, pines, and peace. 